Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you what I bring in my pack every single time that I go out on an art adventure. What we're gonna be talking about today is a concept called a day hike. A day hike is a hike that you do in a single day, sometimes in as little as 30 minutes to an hour, and they can even take as long as eight to 10 hours, depending on what exactly you're looking for, where you're at within your training with hiking, and how you wanna go about it. Seeing a lot of you share that you're feeling inspired to go out and do these things yourself, I wanna make sure that you feel as prepared as I do, making sure that you have everything that you need to stay safe when you're out and exploring in the outdoors. So this pack is kind of a big guy. <laughs> it is from Cotopaxi and it's the Inca 26. And so it fits a lot of things, has a lot of different zipper pockets, and I'll get into showing you what I need. You don't need a pack this big, but I have been hiking very seriously and regularly for about four years now, and I haven't needed to call emergency services yet. Everything that I've been able to do in order to keep myself safe and feeling really comfortable outdoors has been inside this pack. So if you're a newbie, I recommend going for something a little bit bigger. You can find used packs. The key thing to keep in mind is the amount of liters is going to be how much you can fit in it. So this one is a 26 liter. I would say anything that's 20 liter or bigger will be great for a beginner. All right, so let's go into the front, which is this sort of neoprene thing. I've got sunscreen two different types. So areas that I'm in a little bit more sun, I'll do 70. And areas that see less sun, will go 45. A solar charger power bank that also has a flashlight on the end. My sketchbook. And some hand sanitizer. Now, these are things that I'm using pretty regularly, so they're gonna be in the outside front of the pack. Sometimes in the outside of the front of the pack, I keep the telephoto lens for my camera but I was keeping that in the small zip pocket here. So these are the things that I wanna be able to quickly, easily access to reapply sunscreen, to wash my hands, to charge things, or to sketch. Now notice I'm not keeping my sketchbook with the rest of my art supplies, and I'll go into that in a few. Okay, so next up, I have this front zipper pocket that's kind of in the middle. Inside of here I have an extra paper towel, a little glasses cleaner slash lens cleaner, some goo, some energy gel for electrolytes. They also sell packets of these. A lot of cyclists use them and I'm big into cycling too, but it's basically just this like energy goo <laughs> that will make you wanna keep going when you wanna quit and stop. They also make them that come with caffeine. I usually do one of these goo packets or the liquid IV packets. I don't love either of them a lot, so I'm open to suggestions if you have others that you like, but just making sure you have some kind of electrolyte because that can be really, really helpful to keep you going for that final push. This is also the pocket where I normally keep my keys because there's this little hook that I can hook my keys onto and my wallet. Next up is the main compartment. And inside of here, I have quite a few things. So I have a sitting pad. This just kind of folds out and I can use this for sitting on while I'm making art or just eating lunch. This makes a rock comfortable, which is very important. I also have this little pouch and these are just, a, this is just a Loki collapsible grocery bag and I use this for when I'm carrying fruit or vegetables that I don't want to get squished. So I brought a bunch of stone fruit out on my hike yesterday and so I just actually tied this to the outside of my bag so it wouldn't squish the fruit on the inside. So basically just a snack pack. Next up an extra pair of socks. These are the old style of Costco hiking sock, and I have never found a sock this good. I wish they still sold these. They used to come in a six pack, and they were like $15. And I've just had been nursing my two packs of them, and I love them, and I wish they still existed. I found similar style of socks at REI, but they're like $14 each. So, kind of a bummer but I love these because they're all wool and extremely comfortable. So I bring an extra pair of these and then I have this little stasher bag and inside this stasher bag is all of my trash from yesterday. So in here I had 
some leftover slices of pizza. I will show you the food that I brought with. So we brought extra pizza slices. I made two quick little bagel chicken breast sandwiches and some stone fruit as well as some cheese sticks and some trail mix. So when you're doing a day hike, like the one I did yesterday, it was 10 miles, and you wanna make sure that you have enough food. I am not about diet culture, trying to find yourself a calorie deficit, but when it comes to hiking and backpacking and anytime you're going out in nature and doing extraneous activity, you need to make sure that you have enough to eat. I have done a very stupid thing and went on a hike with my partner that was 11 miles. It was all downhill going in, uphill coming back, and the only things we had to share were two power bars, so two like granola bars, and a can of Trader Joe's Dolmas. So don't be like me, make sure you have enough food or else you're not gonna have a fun time. Okay, on to the next things in the pack here. I also really like that these stasher bags allow me to pack things out. You'll notice inside of here I have things that have little apple print on them. These stasher bags are expensive. I only have two of them. And so for every extra thing that I bring with me, I use just these wax paper bags with a little bit of adhesive on the top and I get them from Target. All right, more napkins trail mix. Making your own trail mix is the cheaper option, but Trader Joe's makes really, really good trail mix. This is the Happy Trekking Mix, which has almonds, chocolate, cashews, pistachios, dry cranberries, and cherries. So it's like a real treat. And then next up in this dry bag, I have my art supplies. So I put them in a dry bag because I've had some issues lately with my gouache palette leaking and I'm trying to not get paint all over my hiking pack. So in here I have my art burrito with all of my supplies. If you want more details on these supplies in the art burrito, you can check out the video that I'm gonna link above. That's all about what I put in here in my travel kit. I've got my old watercolor crayon container that I now use as a palette. So one side I have some palette paper and one side is just the interior of this box. My view catcher that allows me to figure out my composition when I'm painting out the landscape. And then here wrapped in an old towel is my gouache kit. But yeah, it, it is having some issues with leaking. The outside of this is starting to leak around the hinge. I still need to diagnose exactly why that is happening. My first aid kit. And I just tossed my binder clips in here yesterday that hold my sketchbook open, but you can also clip them onto some kind of roll situation like this. Okay, so now this is empty. If you're a creative person, but maybe you don't wanna do art out on a hike, you can bring a ton of different things in a bag like this. You can bring a puzzle, you can bring knitting supplies, you can bring stuff to do embroidery, you could bring coloring book pages and some crayons. Maybe you're a writer and you wanna bring your notebook and some pens. So this is a really great way to be creative out in nature. And I highly recommend it because there's nothing like hiking for a couple of miles, stopping and actually resting and relaxing and enjoying the place rather than trying to just get from point A to point B and back to the car. Before I go into the first aid kit, I want to go into the other stuff that's in my bag first. So the other thing that I love about this bag is that it has hip straps. So hip straps are really important for weight distribution when you're hiking. I wouldn't recommend using a pack that is just shoulder straps if you are going any more than five miles because you're going to have a lot of weight on your shoulders, especially if you're an artist. We get so much strain and buildup in our shoulders that I think it's really important to make sure that we're distributing that weight onto our hips. And then with these little hip straps, I can also put things in these little pockets. They aren't big enough for a phone. 
So I make sure that I wear pants with pockets for having my phone or use a fanny pack or a belt bag for the things I need quick access to. But in here I have a Nature Valley Crunchy Bar that is basically just packaged granola at this point, as well as an extra binder clip. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this to here because that's where it belongs. And then on this side, some of you know I have long COVID, so occasionally on hikes I have to stop and rest and my lungs will flare up. And the solution I have for that is one of these little albuterol inhalers. So I always keep that on me. And then the front of the pack actually has this little zip container. This is typically where I will put like a little bit of moleskin or I will put the keys to my car. So that way I have them at, qu at quick, easy access. And then it's also got this little hook for my water bladder that is inside. So I'll show you that. And then I have my water bladder in here. All right, so now my pack is empty and I've got my water bladder and inside of this, I can hold two and a half liters of water. This is from Camelback. So when I go out hiking, I always try to make sure that I have three liters of water at least. So this is two and a half liters. And then I also have a one liter Nalgene that I've got some of my stickers on. And this has an extra liter. So I really bring three and a half liters of water. That's really important. Another solution is to have a water filter. And I'll show you that when I unpack my partner's pack here in a bit. Hiking poles are important if you're someone like me who has bad knees. So they are great for making sure that I'm not putting too much pressure on my knees, especially if I'm doing a lot of descending, like going down. Every time that I step, I put one of these down and then I step and it takes some of that pressure off of my knees. So what I also really love about this bag is that these bottom zippers here that I didn't use for anything yesterday have these little straps inside that I can put through the bottom like so and then use that to strap my hiking poles to the outside and then the bottom of the pole can go into this little loop here and then I can shorten the poles and strap them on like so which is great because then I don't always have to be carrying my poles so awesome now it's time to get into the emergency kit let me put these things away a little bit so I can clear off the floor and we can get into that first aid kit now this is just in a nylon bag from Bagu and it's got some grids on it which I think is always fun it looks like a color chart to me so it reminds me to make and inside of here I've got Quite a few things so i've got two extra energy bars some rope so some paracord an extra pair of shoelaces for your boots another thing that i have in here is a knife so an easy collapsible knife for cutting that paracord it's important to have one of these on you in case you need it and then i've got a tiny emergency bag some gear aid tape, a lighter for sealing the ends of the paracord, a poncho, a wilderness first aid manual, this little pocket outdoor survival guide, and some additional sunscreen in a little container. So all of those fit in here. Inside of this little pack are so many things that can help in an emergency. So inside of here I have a mylar blanket, some moleskin. This stuff is really important if you are starting to get a blister on a hike, pulling over, cutting some of this and putting it on your skin where the blister is forming can help that blister from becoming worse. And it's just good practice to protect your feet when you're out on a hike. Next up, I've got a Swiss army knife. This thing's super cool because it actually has tweezers and it also has a pair of scissors so if i need to cut some of this moleskin up i can just use the swiss army knife here i don't have to bring a big pair of scissors i've got some band-aids of multiple sizes here a cleansing wipe some gauze in case i really hurt myself i've yet to use any gauze out on a trip but it's always good to have some stretch gauze bandages Nitrile gloves in case I'm performing first aid on a friend or my partner. Some antibiotic cream. A signal mirror. 
this was a gift from my partner and it even has instructions on how to use the signal mirror in case you're in a situation where you're in distress and some bug wipes so tick repellent mosquito repellent wipes and then i always keep some sort of naproxen or acetaminophen on me and then an antihistamine I needed one of these yesterday because of all the grass I walked through. It was wild. So having these things on you and knowing how to use them is really important. A lot of you have been commenting about the need for me to pack a emergency communicator and I don't have one of those technically. So there are these things, a really popular one is called the Garmin InReach and it's just this satellite communicator that you can use for reaching out to someone when you don't have cell service. That can be really important, especially out hiking. I am normally in areas that have little to no cell service, but I do have a newer iPhone. So if you have an iPhone 14 or newer, if you are out in an area that has no cellular service, you might receive a notification on your phone that says something like, hey, do you need to contact emergency services via satellite? You can do this here. But it's pretty easy to activate that once you're ready to use it. All you do is you hold the top volume button and the side button at the same time. And then you'll have this little emergency SOS thing pop up. So right now I have cell service and Wi-Fi, but if I didn't, I would see a little satellite here and then I could get the option to contact satellite. So in the description below, I'll put a little bit more info on Apple's satellite SOS and how it's really cool. Do I think that this service will be free forever? Probably not, but it's definitely useful to know that you probably already have something on your phone that you didn't even know about. That's it in terms of first aid. Let me know if you think I missed anything. Now we're gonna go into my partner's pack because he was actually carrying some things that are duplicates and some things that are additional essentials that we split between the two of us so I didn't have to carry them. So let's get into my partner's pack. And so this is a much smaller pack. I think this is a great day pack to use once you feel really comfortable and experienced with going out on hikes. This is the Gregory Miwok 12. So here is where he keeps his extra camera lens. He's got additional trail mix from Trader Joe's and some clip bars. These are really, really great if you don't need to avoid gluten like I do. These are an awesome way to sustain energy on the trail. Then that's all he had in his front pocket. Then there's this top little zippy pocket. Inside of here is where he's got all of the filters and cleaning cloths for our cameras. We're both photographers and a little brush for cleaning our cameras. So those are all in there. Then in this back pouch, he normally carries a two liter bottle for bottled water. And then on the side, he'll carry an additional one of these Nalgene's completely full. That will give him three liters of water in addition. So the two of us are carrying the six and a half liters of water anytime we go on a hike. Again, the main reason why people end up perishing on hikes, especially in the state of California, is because they don't have enough water. So please, please bring extra water than you think you need out on hikes with you. All right, so then he's got an emergency kit and some additional emergency supplies. So I'll go over these with y'all. And then a little duster for cleaning our camera lenses, an extra camera battery. This is normally something that I have on my person as well. And then this is a great pocket for wallets, keys, those kinds of things. Yeah. So the this pack also is really great because it has hip straps, even though it's really, really tiny. And so that way it's distributing the weight a little bit better. Inside of here, my partner has our GPS. So that way we actually have access to the map in case my phone fails. I always download the map before I go, but he also keeps a Caltopo version of the map live on this little Garmin e-trex 
so that way we can find our way back <laughs> from where we were. Very important. And then over here, this is my partner's buff. So this is what I was talking about of like a thing that you can use to just layer over your neck and keep yourself warm or cool. I'll leave that up. Set this aside. So this first aid kit is very similar to mine, only this one is going to have some slightly different things, so a slightly higher quality backpacking knife. This one also my partner on the first aid manual has annotated every single section of burn, wound, bleeding, medication, spider, snake. So what to do in each situation so that way it's already there. If you're in an emergency, you know what area to flip to. And then he's got and pretty much all the same things that I had in mine, except this one has this mountain mint sunscreen chat balm and this sunscreen bar. These are really, really great. I love having these on me because then you just roll the sunscreen onto your skin. So this is really cool. We got both of these when we were in Joshua Tree. So they have little Joshua Trees on them. But not much different between the two emergency kits. And the reason why we each have one is say we get separated say, God forbid, I fall into a ravine, or we end up separated because the tides come in. Yep, each of us individually having our own emergency pack is key to making sure that we have what we need to patch up any wounds and survive in the wilderness. On the outside of this, his also has an emergency whistle. Mine fell off, so I need to get a new one. But this is really great for signaling that you're in distress because it's such a high pitch that people will be able to hear you. So that's those. And then inside of here, this is just a bag that's typically used for a mess kit when you're camping. So inside of here are some additional essentials. We have a, a Sawyer Squeeze water filter and the actual filter is in here. It looks like this. So you can basically take this. This is allowing us to have additional water. So we can fill this in a creek or a stream, connect this little piece on the end to this, and then slowly it will drip out into our water bottle. It can take up to 40 minutes, but who really cares how much time something takes if it's gonna give you access to water when you're out in nature. So if you'd rather not carry three liters of water because it's heavy, having a water filter on you and knowing how to use it will be really, really essential and important. Key thing that I learned right here on YouTube from a creator named Miranda Goes Outside is that you never want your Sawyer water filter to freeze. So if you're bringing this with you camping or backpacking, keep it in a pocket in your sleeping bag or make sure that you keep it indoors and clean it every once in a while too. So that's water filter. Next up is a kit for going number two in the wilderness. So this is just a little trowel and some toilet paper. If we're being really fancy and going backpacking, we'll also bring our bidet. A compass. Your phone has a compass on it as well as most smartwatches, but teaching yourself how to use one of these is an important survival skill, especially if you just have the trail map and no service and no electronic device battery left. We've got some extra batteries for our GPS and a headlamp. These are really important, especially if you're hiking somewhere and you don't know how late the sun is gonna be. I did not pack my headlamp because my headlamp recently broke, RIP. So between these two, we've got all of the extra emergency kit pieces that we might need. So if you're not splitting things up, things that I might add to my day pack is definitely one of these trowel systems for going to the bathroom, a headlamp, and making sure I have a water filter because that will be really essential for making sure if I do get stuck somewhere that I have extra water. When you're starting hiking, make sure that your hikes are within your particular 
comfort level. Now, the way that I like to do this is using an app called All Trails. Now, I'm not sponsored by them, but I just wanna show you how I use the app because I think you will find it super helpful. And say I am searching for a trail. So I'm gonna say that I'm going to hike in, hmm. I'm gonna go hiking in Eureka, California, because I find it really cool. So I'm gonna go hiking near Eureka, California, and I wanna find something easy. So you can actually go through this app and filter down to, hey, I wanna go hiking, I'm looking for the difficulty of easy, and I want it to be under five miles, C14 trails, and then you can see them. You can also do trails based on elevation gain. So if maybe you're someone who's definitely training to go higher. You can set an elevation gain minimum or you can set a maximum. I had to set a maximum quite a bit when I was first recovering from my initial COVID infection and when it developed into long COVID. I have to be really careful with how much elevation I'm taking on. So I can see all of those different things here. I can click on the individual thing, look at the map and actually preview the elevation for the entire hike and decide whether or not I wanna do it. Now, if you have the premium subscription through All Trails, again, I'm not sponsored by them, but I would love to be, hi All Trails, is to download the app, download the map, and then that way you have access to it offline. So if you have no cell service, you can still see your map, you can still navigate. And for me, that gives me a huge, huge, huge peace of mind when I'm out. I also want to stress here safety. I've talked about my first aid kit, talked about my partner's first aid kit, but the most important thing that you can do is to try not to go hiking by yourself, especially when you're new. If you are going hiking by yourself, please let at least two people know, one local and one from wherever, where you are going and when you should be home and let them know once you're back. It's important to know where you are, so leaving those types of information are really crucial. Now, if you're going with a friend and you're both new beginners, definitely let people know where you're going, but you are a little bit safer when you're with a pal. That way you can check one another in terms of maps. Even this past weekend, I was out hiking with a couple of friends and my partner, and we all had to check ourselves on the map to make sure that we were going the right direction. Having a friend with you, especially when you're new, is a great way to ease into the sport. I'll admit that I've had scary experiences, especially when it comes to dealing with snow. I've been at a campsite where I decided to bounce once the snow started coming in because I have ne never dealt with alpine snow in my life and high elevation gains in a car with snow and ice, not my jam. So make sure that you know where your limits are and what is or isn't okay with you. And it's okay to be a little bit scared, but if you're super scared, it's okay to bail. It's so okay to bail. That is it for this video. Hopefully all of my tips helped you feel a little bit safer going out hiking. An ocean template that I use for making sure that I'm bringing everything I need before I head out on a hike is actually available on my website as a download. So for just four bucks, I've got it on sale right now. You can go grab it and have a little checklist that you can reuse every single time that you go on an art adventure. I also have a zine that I made all about creating your own creative retreat hiking and backpacking where I show you drawings that I made of my gear and at the very back of that there's a list of prompts and a pack checklist as well. So you can pick one of these up. I've got A stock for $12 and B stock with some slight misprints on the front cover for just $9. The bits about that are down in the description below. If there's something that I missed that you bring out on hikes that you feel like is an absolute essential, let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you as to what things you bring because I'd love to get even better. One last thing that I'll leave you with is I got to work on some really, really cool album art as a commission and the single is being released today. So you can actually go check that out down with the link in my description below and see some of my art on your Apple Music or Spotify. It's by this really great artist named Hotel Leo based in Kansas City. So I hope you'll check out his work because it's really awesome. If you're into like 1980s inspired synth pop, I think you're really gonna like it. Okay, until next time, stay creative and find your own ways to persistently bloom. Stay safe out there. Oh, wow, you're still 
you're still watching. That's really cool. So um, I do have a video right here that the algorithm says that you're going to like. And then you can click this little button right here to subscribe. Till next time, goodbye.